He is a musician and author of the book, and Then It Fell Apart, which launches this Monday, May 6th, at the Aratani Theater here in Los Angeles. I love this guy's shit. Moby is over here. Wow. Hello. How are you? I am a longtime fan. A lot of Moby in my playlists. Uh-oh. I oh, no, that's a good thing. <laughs> okay, thanks. I can't believe it's 20 years since play. <sighs> yeah. As I, you said I regarding need... the Carpenters, yeah. we're old. Yeah. Well, I you know, as a musician, before we get into the heavy stuff with the book, I did want to ask you, like I'm the youngest person in my house. I don't have kids. I'm the mm -hmm. only person in my house. That's how I stay the youngest. God bless. Me too. So uh, I, I just, you know, I, I want to like the new stuff, and I always am asking, am I old or does it actually suck? Well, I got Spotify. I think it actually sucks. I got Spotify on my phone, and when I first got it, I was like, oh, I'm going to hear all this new music, and immediately I used it as a nostalgia machine. And, like, basically, Spotify is my high school playlist. <laughs> like, I haven't... My, my musical taste sort of ended around 1984. Wow. So modern music might be great, but it can't compete with The Clash well, or Public Enemy or John Lennon or Neil Young, on and on and on. But I feel like... You, I feel like you were very much on the cusp of something that everybody does now, that you were many things at once. I may be wrong about this, but you weren't just the musician and you sometimes sang, you sang, but you were like a curator and a DJ and a producer. It was like, I make this record, I'm on it, but then if I want to put something else into it, I do that too. Well, because originally, originally I wanted to be a singer, but I'm not a great singer, so I had to learn how to do everything else. And I, so it wasn't like, like that old adage, uh, necessity is the mother, mother of invention. Yeah. I wanted to be Bono or David Bowie but my singing voice is really mediocre. So I like, had to learn instruments and production and DJing to sort of like overcompensate for the fact that I'm a shitty singer. But with auto-tune, no one is a shitty singer. But, yeah, nowadays that is true. Yeah, and yeah. that's one thing I don't like about the modern sound. Okay, but what I love about... I like, the... but I do like complaining about young people. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's always satisfying, you're right. But I, I, what I really loved about your book, and the first one, too, I mean, this is your second memoir, mm -hmm. okay, and you're very honest. In a way, even in memoirs, people are not. I mean, you say you loved the adulation. You drank it up like a thirsty sponge. Most people are, don't admit that. You say, you know, you, know, you look at Trez, Trent Reznor, mm -hmm. you had all the women. You wanted women to adore you like that. Well, That's very honest. Because I grew up very poor, Right. And in a very dysfunctional home with, like, sexual abuse and violence and mental illness. And I thought that fame was going to fix everything. And so I pursued it desperately. And for a while, it worked. I mean, there were those moments where I was, like, out of my mind on, like, liquor and drugs and having sex with strangers in the bathroom. And, like, that was great, but not sustainable. <laughs> and then I found myself chasing the dragon, as a lot of aging celebrities do. Right. And, like, so suddenly, like, you're in the basement of a strip club saying to, like, the bouncer at 3 in the morning, don't you know who I am? And you're like, oh, my God, I'm awful. Well, yes, there's that part of it. <laughs> <laughs> if you can, uh, but I... I certainly wouldn't want to turn the kids off to random sex and drugs. No, it's, it's, it's oh, a rite of that passage that should. everyone should go through. Yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, you know, you don't have to be... I mean, you, in your book, it's basically, you know, you had a hole in your soul and sex and drugs did not fill it. No, and I tried and tried and tried <laughs> and tried and tried. I mean, like... It's, it's not the worst journey to be on no. to come up to empty at the end. That's mm -hmm. all I'm saying. Okay, so um, I, I've asked this of all the guests we've had on the show. Have you ever rubbed your penis against Donald Trump? Well, as a matter of fact, as most of the guests would say, yes, I have. Um, Tell me about it. So... No, I read it in your book. There was one night, it was about 2001, I was out at a party and I was very drunk. I'm sober now. Yeah, um, like 10 years? Yeah. Thanks. And, uh... And I was with some friends, and they were telling me about this game that they used to play in college called Knob Touch. Mm -hmm. And I really shouldn't be divulging this in public, but it is in the book. So Knob Touch is when you take your flaccid penis out of your pants. Flaccid. And these days, my penis is always flaccid. <laughs> um, See, honest. I'm a natural. 
and you, you walk around a room and you brush your flaccid penis up against people indiscriminate. It's not sexual. There's no gender involved. And the goal is to see, like... Like Biden. Yeah. Not sexual. <laughs> not sexual. It's just inappropriate. It's just... And, yeah. And so I'm was, not saying he does that. I'm just saying it's not. So I was very drunk, and my friends told me about knob touch, and my girlfriend at the time dared me to knob touch Donald Trump. Right. So I've only rubbed my flaccid penis against one person in the entire world, and that man is currently on a golden toilet in the White House <laughs> tweeting about something. <laughs> okay. So. <laughs> <laughs> Life goals. Yeah, Life go I wish goal. I could do the same. Well, and I'm planning. <laughs> I am, I am going to do knob touch with him as soon as I can. Okay. I mean, yeah, it's, um, it's, it's, uh, I, I probably wouldn't do that now that I'm like old and sober. Right. But at the time, yes. when I was blackout drunk. Absolutely. The Beatles got high when they got their MBEs from the, you know, the medals from the British Empire. You got to yeah. do it. I Willie mean, Nelson got stoned in the Lincoln. Keith Richards. Yeah. yeah, Keith Richards shot up yeah. in the rock, White House. Yeah, you were a rock star. You, know, you deserve some up. rock star shit. Okay. Rock star shit for Moby. Thank so, you. and also you're, uh, you're one of my heroes, because like me, you're an animal lover, and you're a real yeah. activist. You have a vegan restaurant. Did you see Beyond Meat and Beyond Burger? Yeah. These companies now, yeah. I've noticed myself out at restaurant. The veggie burger is foods. not what it was two years yeah. ago. They finally got it with the veggie burger. Yeah. They actually, this is going to be a big thing, right? I hope, I mean, I've been a vegan for 31 years. Wow. And honestly, animal rights is my life's work. Like my restaurant, Little Pine, 100% yes. of the profits goes to animal rights organizations. Same thing with this book, then it will fall apart. 100% of the profits goes to animal wow. rights organizations. So entrepreneurially, I'm an idiot. Right. You know, like everything no, I do good. professionally, like 100% of my profits go to animal rights organizations because, and I wanted to talk to Jay Inslee if he's still here. Somewhere, He'll be here later. Um, about climate change. He lives here now. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, because whenever people talk about climate change, they ignore animal agriculture. I agree. And yes. animal Huge. agriculture is the third leading cause of climate yeah. change. Like talking about climate change and not addressing animal agriculture is like talking about lung cancer and not talking about smoking. So right. America and everyone. If in any way, but then again, I would also say, I don't like humans very much. So like, maybe you should keep eating bacon and burgers and destroy yourselves. Like get, get obese okay. and destroy wow. the planet. I think, we, I think we took that one subway stop too far. <laughs> but I'm totally with you on the rest of it. Yeah. <laughs>